we are live from the team in the Wright Stadium on the campus of Savannah State University getting set for BAC football. We are live from T.A. Wright Stadium on the campus of Savannah State University getting set for MEAC football on ESPN3. Charles Ward alongside Curtis Foster with the play call as the Aggies of North Carolina A&T visit the Tigers of Savannah State University in this MEAC contest, Curtis. And in this ball game, it's one team that's winning its play down in the MEAC and the other still in contention for the MEAC contest. Yes, you're absolutely right. The A&T have a chance of still going to the Celebration Bowl. And what you have, the Tigers, which are going to stay last year in the MEAC, going back to Division Two next year. Uh, but the time that the Tigers have had in the MEAC, they have 9 and 5, nine and five fifty-two. They have a record of 9 and 52 uh, for they stay in the MEAC. Chance for them to play spoiler this afternoon, though, with the Aggies in contention. They'll, the Aggies will need some help from the other teams, but Savannah a real roadblock for them this afternoon. Well, I tell you what, Savannah State has a great chance today because the Aggies are playing without their starting quarterback, Lamar Raynard, today that is out hurt. So that's giving the Tigers a great chance to, to maybe be the spoiler today. Tigers of Savannah State last in the MEAC in offensive output. They'll meet a team in the Aggies that's number one in defense. What that, what's that mean for this ball game? Well, you know, the Tigers got to do better than 55 yards passing on what they had uh, last week against Dell State, Delaware State. And they also have to uh, more than 126 yards. You have to do more than that to beat this Aggie team today. Aggie team coming in at seven and two, and Savannah at two and six. As we talk about the Tigers winding up, we'll see if they can put that roadblock in the way of the Aggies as they contend for the MEAC title. That's the stage we have set for you here. It's the Tigers of Savannah State getting set to host the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Football action coming your way after the break. Seriously smart, seriously bold, seriously impressive. We are Savannah State University. Well, that's the Tigers definitely got to get something going on offense here today. Well, you know, uh, you know, we talked about with, with, with Lamont, Renner is not in the contest today, but they still got to worry about Cartwright, the running back of a and who ran for 187 yards last week. Also, they have another running back. Martins also is a great runner with 10, 130. So the Aggies was very successful in the running game on last week. They had a total of 310 yards rushing so the Tigers got to worry about stopping that running game as well as the passing game
true. Baldwin is definitely the truth. And uh, I, I saw uh, Javon Gibbons caught the ball on the sideline to take it off on the sideline like he, he had the ball was on the field. So, you know, starting for the Tigers will be Javon Gibbons. Great running. Uh, excellent quarterback. And uh, I think that uh, Aggies may have their hands full with him today too as well. pitch there and uh, they were trying to catch the Aggies by surprise there thing about it if you, either one of these teams you definitely want to establish the run game here because definitely in order to be successful with the pass you have to establish the run game You know, he may pass, but Gibbons has been uh, has a tendency to run on third down to try to pick up the first down as well. Wow. Wow, that was high there. Like he was throwing to receive about 6-9. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. So the incomplete pass brings up a fourth down for the Tigers of Savannah State. They'll have to punt the football away. It'll be Chandler Williams set to do that. Williams, the junior, to kick it. Averaging 33 yards per punt for the Tigers. Whistles at the line of scrimmage. Aggies may have come in there a little too soon. It was showing that they were coming after the punt. But instead, it'll be a false start against the Tigers of Savannah State. Tigers of Savannah State with the first assessment of the ball game. Sixth in the MEAC in penalties coming into today's contest. Had 63 for a total of 623 yards in penalties. So a good start to the drive by the Tigers now. Spurted, sputtered. And now they're getting set to kick it away after the five-yard assessment. McCain standing deep to return for the Aggies. He'll squeeze it near the 15. Fair catch called for there for McCain. So here come the Aggies offense now. Offensive coordinator Chris Barnett. Offense right now fifth in the MEAC. Averaging 360 yards per ball game. 436 yards last weekend in the win over the Spartans of Norfolk State. 37-20. So with Raynard out of the lineup now. Looks like he's out there. Raynard is out there. He is playing. Yeah, so the word we got that he would not be. Ball fake there, and they go around the right side on the keeper, on the carry there, right side. Pick up of about three on that play. And correction. And a correction, it is not Raynard out there. It's Khalil Carter, Carter, the senior. So Carter getting the start instead of Raynard. Carter, 28 of 52 coming in. 
So second down effort now for the Aggies. Ball fake, and they go back on the inside. Cartwright with the carry, runs it past the 25, up near the 26, and runs it for the Aggie first down. Cartwright, 21 carries last weekend for 183 yards. That was his career high. Redshirt senior, now ball fake, out in the flats, catch made at the corner. Nicely done on the catch by Bell. And he works his way toward the Savannah State sideline after about a pickup of four on the pass route. And speak of the run. <laughs> speak of the run. That's Carter there near the 40-yard line. That's good enough for the Aggie first down. So Kyle Carter. Senior, 5'10", 230 pounds out of Austell, Georgia. Completed his first aerial, and now with this run, gives the Aggies a first down at the 39-yard line. Whistles in before this play. Tigers with an opportunity to bring in some substitutions defensively. Carter with the snap. Out in the flats. Catch made there, wrapped up nicely by the Tiger defense in pursuit there. Pass to Malik Wilson, the redshirt senior. Wilson with 25 catches coming into today's ball game for the Aggies. His first grab in this afternoon contest. First quarter action here from T.A. Wright Stadium on the campus of Savannah State University. On the ground looking for some room at the corner. That's Jermaine Martin. Martin runs it to the 45-yard line for North Carolina A&T. <laughs> so that brings up the third down after the run. For A and T. Movement up front. Now we got a flag coming in. That time it was Marcus Pettiford, the redshirt junior, the left tackle, breaking his position there. And Five-yard assessment against the Aggies. So Carter now and the Aggies face a third down and about eight. Carter surveys, lost it out in the flats. Pass goes over the head, incomplete. Was trying to get it out there to Zachary Leslie, the redshirt sophomore from Lawndale, North Carolina, but the pass incomplete. And the Aggies forced to punt it now. Yates, a six foot one freshman, had a career high 13 tackles in last weekend's loss against the Del Delaware State University. 25 6, but Yates with a career performance for Savannah State. So Michael Rivers to punt it now for the Aggies. Floater by Rivers. It will bounce back upfield for the Tigers of Savannah State near the 35-yard line. They got the benefit of a good roll there. Yes, it is. The Tigers got a good uh, bounce there on that one. And you see the coaches are telling the Tigers uh, to get back, get back, get away from the ball. So it'll start from the 35, second possession of this first quarter for the Tigers.
Honda days with great deals on the Honda Accord. Right now at your Honda dealer. Right Stadium on the campus of Savannah State University where the Tigers of Savannah State hosting the Aggies of North Carolina T. First quarter action, no score. But the Aggies of A&T back on defense now after having to punt that football away. Savannah State back on offense. They go on the ground with the reverse. Right side on the carry. That's Baldwin trying to get it into his hands as much as they can, and Baldwin runs it up near the 45. And you know, the, the thing about the Tigers, the Tigers have been very successful uh, on that jet sweep there that they run there, especially using Baldwin coming around the side there with, with all his speed ability. So up to the 44 after the run by Baldwin. Baldwin, five catches on the season from his wideout position, his first carry of this football game. Snap to Gibbons. Try to work it up in the middle. Carry that time by Saxton for the Tigers of Savannah State. Keep this way ahead for a couple of yards there for the Tigers. Yeah, they Not just enough for the first down. Running back core, running behind the line of King, Jackson, McLeod, Livingston, and Johnson up front for Savannah State. First and ten now. Gibbons gives it to Saxton and runs into a bunch of Aggies there in the backfield. That play kind of started out rough in terms of the sequence between Gibbons and Saxton on the handout. Gave the Aggies enough time to converge in the backfield. Yeah, he ran into big 45, Key Andrews Jones, their linebacker, six foot, 240 pound freshman. So that'll push him back to the 42 yard line now. Make it second down and about 13 for the Tigers. Gibbons, the lefty, in the pocket. Fires out in the flats. Good comeback route there and catch made out the flats by DeAndre Sneed, the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia, for the Tigers. Need with 11 catches coming into today's ball game. That's his first grab in the contest. 8.40 left in the first half. Scoreless between the Aggies of North Carolina A&T and the Tigers of Savannah State. Okay. This is a big third down play here for the Tigers. They go on the ground and knock down behind the line of scrimmage. They gave it to Baldwin. Baldwin on that jet sweep again. And the Aggies shut it down. Sam Plu, defense in, 6'1", 242 pound redshirt senior say he was not having that today. So that'll force Chandler, Chandler Williams back out on the football field now to punt it for the Tigers of Savannah State. So they went with the sweep there, not able to convert. Williams to kick, second punt of this first half for him. Franklin McCain, the third, the red shirt sophomore, stands deep for the Aggies. They're coming after the kick. Nice kick there. Oh, wow. That was a beautiful kick. McCain looking at it. Didn't touch it. And the Tigers now down near the five-yard line. They'll down the football there. So great punt there by Chandler Williams. Had a long of 55 on the season. Yeah, that was, that, I'm sorry, that was very close there that the Tigers went down on the uh, punt. Since 1890, Savannah. Drink of Fansville. Savannah State University, no score between the Aggies and North Carolina A&T and the Tigers of Savannah State. Aggies, after the punt, now will take the football, starting this drive from their own 12-yard line. Carter sets, fires across the middle, threw it in traffic, and the pass goes incomplete. Pass fell on a crossing route, but the coverage, excellent there by the Tigers. And, you know, the thing about it is this this. Both teams are not a very good passing team. The the Aggies, they can pass when Renard is in there, but they, they're basically going to depend on their running game today between Cartwright and Martin. Well, we talked about this at the top of the broadcast, Curtis, that this is a significant ball game, particularly for the Aggies, North Carolina A&T. They've got to get through this one, and then they got to win next weekend to keep the 
hope alive for back-to-back -back MEAC championships. And hope that Pham lose a couple. Carter out in the flats. Catch going to be made at the corner there. Knocked out of bounds. Defense for the Tigers. Surgeon got it over to Wilson. Wilson with his second grab in this first half of play. And so far we've had a, a defensive ball game here, and uh, both teams have been playing pretty good defense here today. Here comes a third down play for the Aggies. You know the Tigers want to stop them here to get the advantage of the field position. 7.03 left first quarter of play. clock working its way down to nine now as Carter finally gets what he needs from the sidelines. With the snap, quick hurry, pass out in the flats. Wow. And that one incomplete, trying to get it to Wilson again, but you just got the sense that the Aggies were just a little bit off tempo there in terms of setting that play. Well, you know, Carter had to really get that ball off. He felt the pressure coming in from the Tigers there, so he had to really get rid of that ball, and uh, he let it fly on himself. So the incompletion now. Had a flag coming in at the back of that play. Didn't see that one coming down on the turf here at Wright Stadium. Personal foul against the Tigers of Savannah State, roughing the quarterback there. So that's going to give wow. the, the Aggies the first down, courtesy and, of the Tigers. And that was a big break for the Aggies there, you know. But like I said, it was a lot of pressure coming there. And uh, I, Charles, I didn't see it. Maybe, you know, we, we missed it as we were talking. I, I didn't see the late hit. Assessment goes against the Tigers. That's their second in its first quarter of play. And it pushes the football up to the 35 and a fresh set of downs for the Aggies. Carter pumps once now. Got a man here near the sideline. At the sideline, catch going to be made by Bell. Bell found the spot there in that, ag that Tiger defensive secondary that he could sit down and find a clear lane. And Carter found him with the pass. And, you know, that, that was a great progression read by Carter there to, to look downfield and, and hit him uh, right on the corner there, Bell. Bell with 30 catches coming into this afternoon's ball game. Zachary Leslie leads them in receptions for a contest. He's got 37. Bell with 30 for 336 yards. Carter again out in the flats. Bell this time knocked from behind and knocked the football free. Good defensive work there at the corner by Walter Yates once again. Yates with a pop in the back of Bell and knocked the football free. Yo, actually, that was number four, John Wilson there, uh, the senior. It's hard to see these numbers. <laughs> Credit Wilson with the hit. So second down now for the Aggies from the 49 of Savannah State. Tries right side. Catch made by Wilson. He'll work his way upfield. Got it inside the 40. Football was down there. Tigers are saying they had a fumble over there, but the officials saying that it was ruled down. And with the catch and run, that's enough for the Aggie first down. Well, uh, I see this Aggie team. They love to go to that bubble screen to the wide open side of the field there. And, and the Tigers going to have to do something to uh, maintain that. Uh, so can they stop that or put maybe an extra defender over there or something? And a flag coming in at the far side of the football field after players were unpowling after what the Tigers thought was a fumble. The referee for the day's ball game is Robert Fraser. He will give us the outcome of that skirmish on the far side of the football field. Well, it looked like the ref is trying to get his mic working there. It's sounding off. It's going, wow, 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 wow. So I guess he'll come out with something here very soon. <laughs> Looks like it's going to go <laughs> against the Tigers of Savannah State, though, Curtis, as they walk it upfield. And another personal foul called against the Tigers of Savannah State. Tigers were indicated sixth in the MEAC in penalties coming into today's ball game. So that'll push the football inside the 25 down to the 24 for North Carolina A&T. Aggies have never lost to the Tigers of Savannah State. 3-0 coming into today's ballgame. Carter 
getting the start for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T this afternoon as Lamar Raynard, the preseason offensive player of the year for the Aggies, scratched from the lineup this afternoon. Carter doing a fine job of substituting so far. He's in the pocket this time, flushed right side. Now he'll tuck and run. Slides out of bounds inside the 20 down at the 19-yard line. Put him out right at the 20, though. So that's where Carter runs it out of bounds. And makes it second down and about six for North Carolina A&T. Aggies with their deepest penetration of this first quarter of play now. Just outside of the red zone for Savannah State. Slot either side for Carter. On the ground, gives it back to the inside and slashing on the carry. It's Cartwright. And Cartwright inside the 15 for a fresh set of downs for the Aggies on the run. I tell you, this Cartwright is a swifty little running back here, you know, definitely. They go quickly on the next play, and they push it right down near the 10-yard line. Just a no huddle, no set there for the Aggies. And they push it to the 10. That was very quick by the Aggies there, uh, getting back on the ball to run that play in order to get the first third down, get the first down, I'm sorry. So Carter on the keeper. Receivers flanked either side. Now they bring a man in motion. They go right side on the carry. That's Martin with the football. Martin to the corner. And Martin scores for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. So the Aggies strike first here on the carry from the 10-yard line by Martin to notch the first score of the contest. Well, I, I tell you, that, that was a great blocking by the Aggies' offensive line. I mean, there's great blocking and run blocking, and uh, uh, Martin just, just read his blocks and then took it on into the end zone there. So Jermaine Martin with the touchdown around run for North Carolina A&T. Now Noel Ruiz will come on to try the point after for the Aggies. Ruiz, fifth in the conference in point after attempts, 31 of 36. Placed by Carter, kick by Ruiz, is on target, and the Aggies take a 7-0 lead over the Tigers of Savannah State. Time out on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. Back at T.A. Wright Stadium, 7-0 lead now for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T over the Tigers of Savannah State. Ten-yard run right side by Jermaine Martin gives the Aggies the early lead. Ruiz set to kick it. The Tigers set to see if they can't answer that drive by the Aggies. Very impressive push down the field by North Carolina A&T. Yes, it was. It was a great push by uh, North Carolina A&T getting into the end zone. The Tigers definitely have the answer here. Tigers on a return now. Spinning on the inside is Baldwin. Baldwin's got free and works it left side. A bevy of flags coming in at the back of that play as Baldwin works his way near the 30-yard line, but we'll check the flags out here, Curtis. Yeah, let's see. It's got to be a, either a block in the back or a hold. Neither good for the Tigers of Savannah State. Trying to get Baldwin free. Yes, and then Baldwin did an excellent job is, is, is getting in and out of there and uh, not getting tight. I thought they had him back in the back, but he came out of it. Baldwin fifth in the MEAC in kick returns. But this one's going to come be pushed back now down near the 16-yard line after the assessment. So a busy afternoon for the officiating crew with the penalties against the Tigers thus far. Four minutes remains, first quarter. 7-0 lead for North Carolina A&T. Gibbons, the sophomore, joined by McLeod. Ball fake, Gibbons fires across the middle. Good pass there by Gibbons. Catch made in stride by Zar Bentley for the Tigers of Savannah State. And that was a great post uh, pass by Gibbons. Great pressure read by Gibbons there. To see his receivers come across the middle there. So to the 32-yard line after the catch by Benavie. 
That's his seventh of the season for the Tigers of Savannah. Gibbons with a dart thrown that pass. From the 33, Tigers on the season, 10th in the conference in passing. That's 94 yards per game. They go on the ground on this carry up near the 36-yard line. McLeod on that punch for Savannah State. Well, you know, definitely these Tigers definitely need to get something going here. They definitely need to get a drive, sustain a drive here. They try to get in that end zone. They try to put some points on the ball. You don't want to get too far behind this Aggies team here. Tigers averaging just 13 points per ball game. Points have been difficult to come by thus far for Savannah State. But in this opportunity to play spoiler against the Aggies, see if they can change that dimension today. On the ground, Gibbons got some room there. The lefty works his way past the 40 on the run. Come up about a half yard shy of that first down marker, but a good read there by Devon Gibbons, the sophomore with the carry. I thought he had the first down, but uh, it's third and about one there. Got to get it right at the 42 for the first down. Gibbons, two touchdowns on the ground for the Tigers. Benamy. In motion on the ground. McLeod on another good ball fake there by Gibbons. And Gibbons runs it left side for the first down. Excellent fake inside to McLeod through the defense. And Gibbons finds the lane for the first down pickup. You know, if you're Aggie or a point of play against the Tigers, you definitely have to put someone on Gibbons at all times. You never know when he's going to run the ball. So, you know, you probably need to put a spotter or a linebacker on him because, I mean, he, he may read option. He may look, go for a pass and he takes, takes off and run the ball. He probably says, Coach, yeah. I, I had my eye on him. He just fooled me. <laughs> Gibbons this time going to go up top. Looking. Lost it downfield. Got a man behind the coverage, but he can't run it down. Was trying to leave it there for... Steven Tyler Hagen, and Hagen, the tight end, the senior from Guyton, Georgia, is not able to leg it out to catch up with the pass. Well, you know, and he's a big target, you know, six, seven, big kid. Uh, you know, it's a kid that you could try to get out of there. If he had a little bit more wheels on him, he might, he <laughs> might have run it down there. You know, just did not have enough wheels. Yeah, that was a Mack truck when you really needed a Corvette there. <laughs> yeah, you know, you try to shift the gears a little bit. I know that all too well. <laughs> So after the incompletion, it remains a second down and 10 from the 44. Gibbons, quick pitch out to McLeod, left side. He's got a blocker out in front of him. And McLeod cuts it back to the inside up near the midfield stripe. Just a little quick pitch there to get McLeod started. It's not bad. I mean, uh, he's a big running back, and uh, once he get rolling downfield, it might be hard to bring him down. Out at 3.4 yards per carry for the Tigers of Savannah State. And they also have a little speech to call Saxton that, that when yep. you get him on the outside, he can go. Saxton with that career high against Norfolk State. We'll see if he plays a factor in this football game here this afternoon. Not out on the field right now. McLeod flats out, dumps it out in the flats, and McLeod, Gibbons trying to get it to McLeod, and McLeod just not able to pull it in. That was set well there, Curtis. Just didn't execute on the pass. Well, uh, McLeod was trying to run before he really had the ball. You know, and they always teach you at the beginning, catch, tuck, run. And, and uh, he was trying to run before he even had the ball even tucked in. So that incompletion will force the Tigers to punt the football away. Williams with a nice punt on his last effort. And McCain will stand deep for North Carolina a and High snap. Another good kick there by Williams. McCain calls fair catch, bobbled it momentarily, but squeezes at the 15. You know, it's good kick, also good coverage uh, by the Tigers too as well. So the Aggies with a seven nothing lead in tow. They come back out on the football field with their offense. 
Aggies have got to win out to remain in contention for the MEAC title. Won it a year ago, going on to become HBCU national champs. The stellar season of 12 and 0 last year. This afternoon, doing it with backup quarterback Khalil Carter calling the signals. It's already led them to one touchdown. Capped by that 10 yard run by Jermaine Martin. Now left side, they give it on the carry. That's Martin with it, trying to pay dividends up near the 23. Well, you know, the, the Aggies came back and told the Tigers, hey, we got a quick pitch too, so we're going to come right back at you. <laughs> and they go quickly to Martin on that one. Pick up of about eight on the carry by Martin. Back on Got the it. inside, slipping down. I tell you, Martin saw the hole there, and he tried to cut the, the grass. This guy, that tiger, reached up and pulled him down. You know, they got the tiger paws right sure. up under the, the carpet here, and he reached up to pull him down and said, where you going, son? Not uh, my house, right? <laughs> not this house today. <laughs> so that will bring us to the end of first quarter action. At the end of the first quarter, it's a 7 nothing lead. And we'll step out for a timeout. You're watching the Act Football on ESPN3. Maytag, what's inside matters. Into the second quarter we go here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Aggies in North Carolina leading it 7-0 over the Tigers of Savannah State University. Aggies with the football from their own 23-yard line. Carter looks for some room right side. He's got some. The 230-pound quarterback fumbled the football, though. But the Aggies able to fall on it back near the 27-yard line. But yes, the Aggies did a good job of getting back on that football there because the Tiger was looking for a break there. And that's what you need right now. The Tigers are definitely hoping to get a break right here, especially down in this territory here. Had a good look at one there, but the Aggies able to cover it. It was enough for the first down, even with the loss of a couple yards on the fumble. So a fresh set of downs now for North Carolina A&T. So Carter doing a good job of throwing the football and running it. Yes, he is. We're coming off behind Reynard, Lamar Le Reynard. Official stepping in now. And a timeout taken, taken by the Aggies of North Carolina. Yeah, you know, the thing about it, I, I, I'm quite sure they weren't happy with the call there, so they called a timeout to correct themselves here. So Savannah State trailing 7 nothing. Go to break. Take a timeout here. You're watching MEX Football on ESPN3 because she's eating tasty, protein-powered, wonderful pistachios. Back at T.A. Wright Stadium, 7-0 lead for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. They took the time out there with coming back, facing a first and 10. Coach Sam Washington obviously not happy with what he saw there. They burned the time out. Carter now got some time in the backfield. Fires the aerial out in the flats. Catch made there by Leslie. Turns toward the outside. Took a hard hit there, but hangs on to it and catch it and runs it up to the 34-yard line. But Carter did a great job as getting out in the open and, and, and progression read, finding Russell on the sideline, they're wide open. Curtis, into the first quarter to play, teams playing fairly even in that first quarter. A&T with 19 plays for 95 yards, Savannah State 16 for 65. The difference is that 10-yard run by Martin for the touchdown with the Aggies leading it. Second down effort here now for North Carolina A&T. Carter determined about the idea of keeping it right side, and he runs it to the 35. And that was a great read by Carter there because no, he wanted to pitch it, but no one was there. The Tiger was all over uh, Cartwright there, so there was no way to go, but he turned it up and got a couple of yards out of it. Carter at the end of the first quarter, five of eight, passing for 36 yards, and on the ground, three carries for 14 yards. He's mixed it up well for the Aggies. In that first 15 minutes. 13.05 left before the intermission now. Third and about two here for North Carolina A&T. Tigers showing they're coming at it. 
Carter with the keeper right side. He's free, third level of the defense now. Can the quarterback outrun the secondary? They finally catch up with him inside of the 25-yard line. Carter at 230 pounds had a big <laughs> lane to run in there. Just not able to outdistance the speedy secondary of the Tigers of Savannah State, but a big ground gainer for the Aggies. Yeah, and, and Carter gave it all the gear. He put in the first two, three, third, whatever gear he get it to, and, and the Tigers were still able to run him down. But as great read by Carter, you know, it was wide open. And you got to give this offensive line a good job of blocking the a and as opening those holes up. Up front for the Aggies is Pettiford. He's first team all MEAC. Mikel Hard, Dakari Wilson. Malik Johnson and Dante Keys. They go on the ground, slicing all the ball fake in the pass wow. by Carter. Goes incomplete. Carter wish he had that one back. Hit just a little behind the receiver. Had the receiver wide open there. Flag on that play there, Curtis. An eligible man downfield for North Carolina A&T. Great call, Charles. Oh, you saw the referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, clairvoyancy isn't my thing. <laughs> But a great ball fake by Carter inside the Cartwright. Drew the defense there. Had a passing lane, just not able to convert on it, as you indicated. So that'll push the football. Back upfield. As Martin goes to the sideline. And William Hollingsworth takes his place in the lineup. He'll be the up back. And punctuating the eye is Cartwright. So now they'll do split here. Carter quickly on the play. Now works it left side on the carry. That's Cartwright. Cartwright inside the 20 down near the 18-yard line. And the Axe doing a good job running a lot of misdirection plays with the Tigers here. Go one way and then bring it back the other side. It was a great job. And, uh, you know... Martin did a great job. I'm sorry, that was Cartwright. Did a great job. Cartwright, first team all MEAC from the running back position. First in the conference in total yards with 817 coming into today's ball game. Cartwright also fifth in all purpose yards in the MEAC. He'll join Carter in the backfield. From the 18-yard line, third down effort here for North Carolina A&T. And Carter going to keep it himself, slides back to the inside, bumped initially by Walter Yates, and not able to pull Carter down. And Yates able to take it, able to take it down to the 14, and runs it for the Aggie first down. You know, last week the A&T Aggies were like five for five in the red zone, so they're a very good uh, team in the red zone. Here. Carter picks up the first out. Second in the MEAC in red zone play. 25 of 28 at 89% conversion for North Carolina A&T. Carter sliding back to the inside. Easy open lane there and spinning near the end zone. And that's going to be a touchdown yeah. by Markel Cartwright for the Aggies. Aggies have found something soft in the interior of the Tigers of Savannah State, and they run to that. Uh, well, yes, they have, and you can say that. They ran for 310 yards last week against a uh, Norfolk team, so you know this is definitely a running team here. Ruiz now on to try the point after. Carter to hold. Kicked by Ruiz, and he is on target. Extends the Aggie lead now to 14-0 over the Tigers of Savannah State after the run on the inside by Carter. 14-0 lead for the Aggies. We'll take a break here. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. The Lexus LS500 and LS500H. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Raquel Carter with his fifth rushing touchdown of the season extends the Aggie lead to 14-0. We're back live at T.A. Wright Stadium. Aggies North Carolina A&T leading the Tigers of Savannah State. Ruiz to kick it, and Curtis needless to say, the Tigers have got to get something going here offensively. Yeah, we, we definitely have to sustain a drive here to uh, get on the board here for the Tigers. Line drive kick by Ruiz. It'll go over the head 
of the return man and into the end zone. So out to the 20 after the kick by Ruiz. So from the 20, the Tiger offense back out. Well, you know, this is a very interesting series here for the Tigers here. Let's see, can they establish a drive here to get on the board with 10 minutes and 38 seconds left in the ball game? I mean, the half. Uh, they definitely want to put some points on the ball before the half because uh, A&T did defer to the second half, so they will be getting the ball coming out the second half. So Gibbons in the offense back out to go to work now. Trips at the bottom of your screen. Aggies with four up front defensively. Slide pitch. Here's Saxton with the football. He's trying to find some room. Works his way back to the interior. And up near the 28-yard line is the shot. Saxon, the senior, with the run. That's the guy you talked about a few minutes ago, yeah. Curtis. Let's see if they can't get him into the mix. Uh, they they got to get the ball in his hands. And him and the uh, kick lighter, young man, I mean, these guys can, can really burn. I mean, so we definitely got to put something in their hands so these Tigers can move the ball. Second down effort now for Savannah State. They go misdirection. Saxton, second wave of the defense now, fights his way up near the 39-yard line. Good enough for the Tiger first down. So Saxton at 5'8", 170 pounds, runs with a lot of authority there on that play. Yes, he does. He's not a very big young man, but he has a lot of toughness, you know, and that's what you want. And all your football players, tough. No matter what size you are, you got to have toughness. Saxton, two touchdowns on the season. 295 yards total coming into today's ball game. They go back to him again. And the diminutive Saxton slides past the 40, up to the 41. Well, you know, Richard Kennels told him, said, hey, Saxton, you got to beat me right now, son. I'm not going to let you get too far. <laughs> so the wrinkle with Saxton into the lineup. We'll see what kind of adjustments that forces from the Aggies and North Carolina A&T. William Reichel, the third-year offensive coordinator for the Tigers of Savannah State. His team now facing a second down and eight. Low snap, but Gibbons handles. Out in the flats, threw it up and over the head of the intended receiver, Jermichael Baldwin. Kind of situation that they really wanted there, Curtis. Baldwin with some space out there, but oh, yeah. the pass floated too high. Baldwin had some space. You know, he had some space to do what he needed to do if he uh, just would have brought the ball down some and... Uh, I would like to see him caught that ball. It has been very interesting there. We'll see if they go back to that play. A third down effort coming here now for Savannah State. We are under nine minutes left in this first half of play. Aggies with the 14-0 lead. Gibbons, pressure at the corner, doesn't see it, gets wrapped up with the sack. Good pursuit at the corner by Darrell Johnson, the redshirt junior from Kingsland, Georgia, for the Aggies of North Carolina a &T. Yeah, Kings of Georgia, that's just right yeah. down the road there. <laughs> Canham County guy. Sure. I don't wonder how you got away from Savannah <laughs> State all the way up to Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, it makes you wonder. <laughs> Say, hmm. So Chandler Williams summoned again now to punt the football away. And this battle of field position just continuing to favor the Aggies. High snap, Williams got it away. Not sure if that was partially deflected or not. Sidewinder rolls toward the sideline up near the 42-yard line, and that's where North Carolina A&T will take it over. A&T is getting a good rush on a punt. I I'm looking to see them block one before the game is over with today. Uh, the Tigers off the line got to do a better job as, as defending the punt. They've been very close. Had a flag thrown on the play. It's just a sideline warning against North Carolina A&T. So no assessment there. They'll start from the 43. Head coach Sam Washington of the Aggies of North Carolina A&T in his first year. Named coach in January of this year. Served as a defensive coordinator at North Carolina A&T. An appendix. Back after the timeout at T.A. Wright Stadium, 14-0 lead for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T over the Tigers of Savannah State. Aggies with the football, first and 10 from their 43 after the punt by the Tigers. Pass out in the flat to bat it away, was trying to get it into the hands of Bell, but good anticipation by John Wilson to knock it down in flight. So Wilson.
Nelson with a credit with a break up there with a nice anticipation of the pass from Carter stepped into the lane to knock it down. Make it second down now. Wilson in motion. They'll give it to him left side. He's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. How about the open field tackle there by Isaiah Bennett for the Tigers of Savannah State? Ah, Bennett say no, no. Don't bring that around this corner here. It was a quick pitch. It, it didn't look like it was going to open up anyway, but Bennett just came up to close it down. Good read by Bennett. Bennett, the senior from Silver Springs, Maryland. Makes it third down. And about 15 now for the Aggies of North Carolina a &T. Trips for Carter at the bottom of the screen. Looks upfield. Now they flush him right side. Toward the sideline, raises, fires, got a man there. Pass incomplete at the 46. Trying to get it into the hands of Ron Hunt, the junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. And Hunt not able to pull it in. Well, actually, it, it, it was a, a, a great pass by Carter. Hunt just could not pull it in. It was He got it right in the, in the bread basket there, and Carter just couldn't pull it in. So good defensive effort there by Savannah State. They'll force the Aggies to punt it here. It'll be Baldwin standing deep, and it'll be Michael Rivers, the freshman for North Carolina A&T, to kick it away. Trying to set a run back if they can. Baldwin waves fair catch though on the fly to the 23 grabs it and that's where the offense comes back out for Savannah State and you know both teams have been very good on, on punt coverage on both sides of the ball you know so we haven't seen a big return as of yet Baldwin almost had one but so Savannah State now led by the sophomore Devon Gibbons coming back out onto the football field Tigers of Savannah State wrapping up play next weekend. They'll be on the road against the Bulldogs of South Carolina State in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Aggies continuing their quest for the MEAC championship in North Carolina Central. At the line of scrimmage and bottled up there. Nothing happening there for Savannah State. I, I tell you, the Aggies defense came across. They just grabbed two of the Tigers players, uh, Gibbons and the McLeod there, and took both of them down. Right at the last, they lost about four on that play. So it'll make it second and 14 now. Tigers of Savannah State, final home game of the 2018 season and their final home game as a member of the MEAC conference. Flag coming in at the back of that play. Another assessment there, Curtis, against the Tigers of Savannah State. False start there. Pushes them back inside the 15. Yes, it is. You know, the Tigers cannot keep stumping themselves in the feet back. You know, they're just stumping and stumping away. Came into this ball game, sixth in the conference in penalties. Had picked up. At least six by my count here in this first half of play. Up to the 20 on the carry. Now this is where Gibbons can be very dangerous. It's third and long here, and you know everybody's expecting the pass, but you know he can come up out of that pocket and run and and, and pick up a first down very easily. Third down and about 13 for the Tigers. Gibbons joined by McLeod in the backfield. Gibbons steps up, surveys, fires, got a man there. Pass dropped. It was Sneed. Sneed caught one earlier in this first half of play, but they're not able to hold on to it. Nothing wrong with that pass either from Gibbons. Not at all. You know, you, you got to catch the football. And Sneed on that route, well short of the first down marker, but first needed to catch it to see if anything would happen. Exactly. So Williams, the junior, very busy for the Tigers this afternoon thus far, set to punt it away. High kick 
by Williams, but short. McCain steps up and catches the fair catch at the 46. A lot of these drives for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. Curtis starting to start right here near the middle of the field. Yes, they are. They're getting good field position, you know, on the punts. And a lot of times it's not about scoring right away. It's about gaining that field position, making that field shorter and shorter. And the Aggies now starting this drive, the previous from the 43, this one from the 46. We're down to 534 left first half. They lead it 14-0 over the Tigers of Savannah State. Tigers trying to spoil back-to-back MEAC championships for the Aggies. If they can defeat them this afternoon. Pass out in the flats. Catch made at the corner by Bell. Carter with the pass to Bell. And Bell really lost a yard on that play. Yes, he did, but the Tigers did a great job of covering that. I mean, he had a move there, but, you know, the closing out to stop him uh, for a loss of one. You get the sense that uh, with the second string quarterback Carter handling the plays today that they're trying to just get him comfortable with some passes out in the flats and putting it in the hands of Bell and Wilson, the wide house, to see if they can make something happen after a short catch. On the ground, slicing right side is Cartwright. And I'm, I'm quite sure the Tigers came into the ball game today is, is, is trying to stop the run, Carter and Martin. But I, I think what A.T. is trying to do, mix it up, showing that even though they don't have the first-string quarterback, the cutter, Carter can pass the ball as well. Correction on that is Jermaine Martin. I heard you catch that one, Curtis. Yeah. Martin was on that cap, carry yeah. there, not Cartwright. Yeah. So he runs it for about two and a half, maybe three for the Aggies. And we go down to 424 left, first half of play. Trips at the bottom of the screen for Carter now. Play clock at three. They got to hurry. They got it away. Ball fake. Carter. He's got a lane if he wants to run. Now he decides. Got it past midfield, but the defense closes down quickly and a hard pop on Car Carter at the 49. So just past midfield. Aggies with the football. So the, the, the Tigers defense has stepped up once again to, to stop this Aggies team here. Now we they're just waiting on this offense to get something going here. So Carter stopped short of the first down marker. So Rivers now to punt it. Baldwin awaits. Line drive kick. Baldwin runs it down over the shoulder catch at the eight. Knocked up a bounds immediately after the grab. I tell you, this Aggie team, special teams, are definitely on Baldwin today. They're not giving him a break. <laughs> they have heard about him now, and it seems like they're concentrating on him pretty heavily. So 3.33 remains first half. Tigers back on offense. But as we talked about a few minutes ago, Curtis, this drive starting inside of the 20 for them. They really got to get some, some space on the field to try to change the field position. But more than that, trailing 14 nothing, really want to see if they can't punch something in here before the break. Yes, they definitely need to score before the break here. Like we talked earlier, the Aggies will receive the ball the second half. Gibbons, ball fake, and gives it up on the inside. But the pursuit is just so heavy by North Carolina A&T. With Saxon carrying the football, just not able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. That's a loss of four on that play. So that'll bring up second down now. Tigers of Savannah State last weekend's loss to Delaware State 25-6. Only 167 yards in total offense. Gibbons in the end zone. Now he'll step up and run. Slides down at about the 11-yard line. Felt some pressure coming from behind and in front of him. Well, you know, that's a smart move by Gibbons there to get down, uh, not to take a hit. And he has matured over the years. Uh, they said last year he would take a hit and do, you know, different things. So that's the maturity that, you know, being two years into your college career. 
Cub is just a sophomore, 6'2", 205 pounds. Third down play here for Savannah State. Or it seems to be continuing from last weekend's ball game. Tigers with 12 penalties in that ball game. Certainly pass half that amount already in this first half of play this afternoon. And here come some more flags. Tigers are saying this time the Aggies got into that neutral zone. Robert Frazier, referee, confers with his buddies near the five, and we'll see what they come away with. Oh, it's against the Tigers. Yep. So that'll push them back even further in their own red zone. Really coming into this ball game, Coach Eric Rayburn and the Tigers knew that they really had to play probably their best ball game of the <laughs> season to contend with the Aggies. But right now, the first 30 minutes hadn't gone that way. Well, you know, they, they knew they had to be consistent, disciplined, you know, uh, in order to play this Aggies team. Third down and a bunch. On the ground, Saxton looking for some room. Wrapped up near the eight-yard line, trying to slide toward the sideline. But the tackle made by McNeil for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T forces a fourth down and a punt by Savannah State, and this one coming out of the end zone. Yeah, Saxton is very upset. Chandler Williams coming back to the sideline. He's trying to get some instruction, looks like, from special teams coach Russell DeMasi before they kick this football away. It looks like the officials are taking a timeout at field level here. Give Savannah State a chance to kind of regroup to think about what needs to happen on this kick. You've been talking about it all first half long, Curtis, and I know what you're getting ready to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm quite sure the Aggies going to bring some pressure to this go around here. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> will. Williams will be kicking it out of the end zone. Aggies with the 14-0 lead with a minute 28 left in this first half. No doubt looking to add on before the break. Senior day here at Savannah State. Recognize the seniors in the pregame, and it's also high school band day here. So at halftime, it's going to be some local bands joining the powerhouse of the South to make out about 800-plus members from high school and Savannah State on the football field. Chandler. They weren't coming. Wobbly kick nonetheless wow. by Chandler. Boy, that went straight toward the sideline near the 15-yard line. Chandler, no <laughs> doubt, expecting a heavy rush there when he didn't get it. Likely lost his concentration on the kick. Yes, he did. So straight sidewinder by Williams gives the Aggies exactly what they want. Yes, yes, they did. 81 seconds left in the first half. They are already down at the 15 after the muff punt there by the Tigers. So Williams, the junior, not able to execute on that punt. So Carter joined in the backfield by Cartwright now. Here's Carter surveying. He'll tuck and run left side. Slips on the surface here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Yeah, but he wouldn't have slipped there. And there was some room there. He could have went for payday. Trying to angle it left side. Got a half yard, and that's it. So that 12th man on the field for the Tigers able to help there with the slip of Carter. Now this time he'll fire the aerial, threw it in traffic, but a catch made there. Nicely done. That's uh, Leslie on the catch for the Aggies of A&T just inside the 10. So Leslie, their leading receiver, the redshirt sophomore with the catch. And a timeout taken by North Carolina A&T. You got the sense here, Curtis, they want to punch this football in to get another score. Oh, yes, they, they want to make sure they call the right play here. 45 seconds left in the first half. They're going to be facing a third down when they come back to the line of scrimmage. going to be about third and a long five or six for them. Yes, it is. So it's a very important play here. You know, even 
Well, they, they don't want to get away from him without putting any points on the board. They have an opportunity to put six. Opportunity to put six on. I mean, they definitely want to put some points on the board here. And the Tigers' defense is definitely did not, trying to deny them of doing either. be interesting to see whether Coach Washington and his coaching staff decide that if they don't get it on this third down play, whether it's fourth down territory or will it just take a three on a field goal and be content to add three more to their lead. Well, the smart move is to take a three if you don't get it with 45 <laughs> seconds left. <laughs> Cartwright in motion. Carter throw back the other way on the comeback route to the inside. They'll take the six. Beautiful play. get it from Zachary Leslie yes. on the catch from Carter. <laughs> I, I like the way you said that, Charles. Well, they'll take the six. <laughs> they, they took it. Definitely did. We'll come back route on the inside by Leslie for the easy score for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. After the punt, pushed it from up punt to the 15. Easy work for the Aggies from there. So Ruiz now on the try the point after. And Ruiz, perfect three for three for him this afternoon. And the Aggies lead it now 21-0 over the Tigers of Savannah State. Time out on the field. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Well, it's like it's going to be a long evening for this Tiger team here if they cannot get some start in the second half. The Tigers absolutely did not need on that last possession. And we could sense that that field was getting shorter and shorter for the Aggies. And they were able to capitalize. So Leslie with the catch. And now Savannah State with 39 seconds left in the first half. Perhaps they can get something going on special teams here. Jamichael Baldwin will stand near the five-yard line to receive. Aggies, North Carolina A&T, the number one defense in the MEAC near the end of the season. And a real trademark mark of Coach Sam Washington, his defensive coordinator for the Aggies prior to taking over as head coach. As D.C. for the Aggies, none of his teams finished out of the top 30 in the country as defensive coordinator. Line drive kick, and this will bounce as now we'll have the run back here by Baldwin. Baldwin trying to make something happen, but runs right into the pack near the 12-yard line. I tell you, those Aggies came down hard that time there. To your point, though, they are concentrating. They're going to let Baldwin be a factor in this football game. They're definitely locking him down. And you got the sense there what Baldwin on that kick was thinking about just letting it bounce, see if it would go into the end zone and just collected it at the last moment. Well, you know, the type of player that Baldwin is, he said, okay, I'll, should I let it go or should I try to make something happen, you know, to, to try to turn this thing around? And you almost have to have that attitude yes. if you're a return man. Yes, yeah. Smart move with the Tigers, just get out, of this, get out of this half, go regroup, make some adjustments at halftime, and, and, and come back and see what we can do the second half. That's precisely what's going on at field level. Gibbons takes the knee, gets what the clock going. 21-0 lead for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T over the Tigers of Savannah State. This MEAC contest, Aggies in North Carolina A&T trying to keep their MEAC championship hopes alive. They have to win out, win today here, and win next weekend against the Eagles of North Carolina Century, Central and get some help from some other teams, notably a loss by the Rattlers of Florida A&M against the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman in the Florida Classic. Two quarters of play down in the books here at T.A. Wright Stadium. At halftime, it's a 21-0 lead for the Aggies in North Carolina over the Tigers of Savannah State. Step out for a timeout here. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Dependable. We are back live at T.A. Wright Stadium at the intermission. Tigers of Savannah State trailing the Aggies in North Carolina. 21-0 at the break. And joining us upstairs in the broadcast booth now, Omar Mashariki. Opio. Opio, Omar. Yeah. Really, I'm too, <laughs> too thinking about Omar Epps or something, right? right? <laughs> 
Obio Marjariki. He's the interim athletics director at Savannah State and also serving as the director of sports information. Obio, thanks for joining us at the halftime. No problem, no problem. Busy day here at Senior Day for Savannah State University. Let's talk a little bit about your day on a day like this where you're kind of wrapping up the home stretch of the season and a day like this. Um, busy. It's a busy day for, you know, the entire athletic staff. We're working hard every time we have a home football game or any game day operation. But this one in particular because uh, this morning we had uh, the time to the breakfast that I had to be on. We had a couple of our coaches, some of our student athletes came out. It was um, it was great. And then we went directly here. And we was able at pregame to honor 18 seniors, which is amazing. It's probably the most seniors we had at football during my 14 year career here. Um, so that's, I mean, it's a great thing. But it's a busy day. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you can look in a half time you have all of these fans here you have um all of the bands here that's come out our band north carolina a band it makes it all worth it and we were talking about that in the first half that the uh, powerhouse of the south joined by some high school bands as well must have been kind of interesting to pull that together to have them have a presence here today as well yeah absolutely you know that's um part of the whole community day atmosphere community day high school band day so that gives them our band the powerhouse of the south a chance to bring some high school bands out for them to hear what we do and then also for them to be able to gauge some of the talent that's out there Just that's good recruiting for the band people don't understand that the band the words right out of my mouth you know, so you know it's, it's, it's a lot of recruiting football recruiting <laughs> band recruiting it's a lot going on everywhere you go right recruit 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 and let's talk a little bit now about the fact that you are serving kind of in a dual role here as interim athletics director and sports information director people don't under i guess a lot of people do really know how busy the sports information director really is but to have the added responsibilities of the athletics director must be a tremendous opportunity but it has to be a lot of work as well yeah you know um I, I, I'll tackle whatever they, they give me here at Savannah State. So, you know, whenever I'm asked to step in at any role, I'm going to go ahead and try to do my best to fulfill what we need to do. Um, you know, me being able to do this is a credit to the staff um, and the people that we have in administration and also to the student body, the students that we have in mass comm because we have some interns that really stepped in in the media relations sports information role and really did a, a great job, you know, alleviating a lot of the things that I was, was doing so that I can go ahead and do some of the things in um, management that an athletic director is supposed to do. But, um, you know, I, it's, it's not going to be for too long, meaning I, 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 we got to get somebody in the office so that I can focus my attention during the interim time because, you know, this, this is definitely taking a toll. But it's also given some other people in the office a chance to step up Indeed. and see their value. We talk about that now from the standpoint of athletics director. I know you wanted to chime in and talk a little bit about some of the successes that Savannah State has had during this athletic season. Yeah, um, well, our women's basketball team just had a great win. Um, they, they just played the other night, and they scored 155 points, Boy. which was, a, which was That's amazing. two games in one, right? <laughs> So it was a lot of shooting. So both of our basketball teams, you know, when it comes to shooting, they – that's what they do. They just go and run and gun. And so it's going to be an exciting season for both of them. I think that that's important. Yesterday, our cross-country team competed um, in Tallahassee in the NCAA South Regional uh, Cross-Country Championship. It's the first time ever since we've been Division One that we've been able to compete in that for cross-country. So I think that's a great feat. Um, we plan to honor them sometime in the second half. Uh, they also, and that was because they finished second at the MEAC cross-country, which is the highest finish for them since we've been in the MEAC. So, you know... We, um, we're, we're happy that our football team is playing here today and we're transitioning to the basketball season. So, you know, we plan on getting a lot of wins for basketball, you know, going to the MEAC championship, you know, um, with our heads held high because this is going to be our last year in the MEAC. Um, so while it's uh, a little bit sad, we're, we're happy to be going back to the SIAC. Um, it's where we have our roots at. Um, we have some natural rivalries there. Um, so we're looking forward to renewing those rivalries and having our fan base excited about a lot of the teams that we're playing. And we get to play about four schools in the state of Georgia, which is great. So the travel is going to be less. You know, we can come follow, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball. Our fans get to follow and come out. A lot went into that decision to decide to go back to Division Two, but it sounds like the right decision for the Tigers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it wasn't an easy decision by no means. You know, it was a lot of planning, preparation, thought process that went into it um, and understanding what it is that we have to do. 
Uh, and ultimately, it boils down is that Savannah State Athletics has to be fiscally responsible. Um, and so we need to make sure that while we're transitioning, we're looking at you know what we're able to do from a financial aspect because that's going to be important. We don't want to outspend ourselves during this transition. Indeed, we have to make sure that you know at the end of the day that we are um, setting our boundaries when it comes to the finances. Well, it sounds like they got the right man to be concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope so. You know, no, I'm, like I said, I'm going to continue to, you know, do what I can um, and work hard. I mean, that's all I can do. Put my head down, work hard in whatever aspect, whatever role that the president gives me, Dr. Doja. Um, I'm just going to continue to work hard, and then we see where we're at. Obi Omar Shariki, Athletics Director on an interim basis, Sports Information Director here at Savannah State University. Obi Omar, thanks for the time. Thank you. Opio Marshariki, and you take a break here. Miak football on ESPN3. We'll go for Dose. That's what I'm talking about. Game over! Dose time! Dose Equis. Keep it interessante. going to follow one rule make sure it's this one luxury should be lived in the infinity winter sales event is on back live at ta wright stadium getting set for second half action here aggies in north carolina a and t with a 21 nothing lead over the tigers of savannah state tigers of savannah state trailing at 21 nothing we get set to start second half. As you indicated, Curtis, Curtis, it's going to be the Aggies that have the football first to start that, the second half. That is true. And then the Tigers definitely going to have to get a sense of urgency here. You know, at this second half, they're going to have to come out strong. They have to uh, get something going on offense. I mean, the defense has been on the field quite a bit. Uh, they've done a couple of jobs with, as far as they made some big stops, but we didn't capitalize on some of the stops that they, uh, that they made. So the Tigers definitely will need to uh, get better at that. First half stats look pretty gaudy here for the Aggies of A&T and suffering for the Tigers at this point. 34 plays, 240 yards for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. 28 plays, just 76 yards for the Tigers of Savannah State in that first half of play. Substitute quarterback Khalil Carter really coming in and making a difference for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. 10 of 15 passing for 53 yards. And on the ground, he's second in terms of rushing in that first half of play. Nine carries for 68 yards for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Uh, you're absolutely right. And I'm quite sure that this Aggies team is going to come out and continue to do the same thing they did in the first half. Continue to drive the ball, run the clock, you know, and uh, let's see what they can do to get out of this ball game and go home. The Tigers definitely going to have to step it up this second half uh, to come with something different. They do something different here on the kick. They try to pooch it. And on the return for the Aggies, it's going to be Amos Williams, the redshirt senior. Williams stumbles at the 29-yard line and falls ahead. They'll mark him down near the 32. Williams don't understand on the 30-yard line. <laughs> There's somebody that's where the Cubs are at. That's where all the tight Cubs are at. And they reach up on <laughs> Off that carpet and just grab you say come here son where are you going <laughs> we've seen it happen right about that spot you're talking about Curtis a couple of times in the first half it just took a tumble there near the 30 up to the 32 yeah. Aggies in their first half got a touchdown with 411 left in their first half on an 11 yard run by Jermaine Martin then they scored again with 1038 with this time Cartwright on a 14-yard run, and their last one before the break, 10 yards pass from Carter to Zachary. 
to make it 21 nothing, and they're trying to tack on more here on that run by Cartwright. Cartwright spins his way up to the 41 yard line. I tell you, Cartwright said, Tigers, my name is Cartwright, so I'm going to show you some of my cuts I'm going to do with you today. <laughs> Good work by him on that run to the 42 for the first down. Flags at the line of scrimmage. Golden Tigers think they saw some movement up front. Senior linebacker William Campbell calling for that flag, and he'll get it from Robert Frazier against the Aggies. Yeah, the Aggies offensive line got a little antsy there. They got excited about the run to cut right. They want to keep move the ball. They want to pour it on right now. They, they, they want to put some points on the board right now. Fourth assessment in the ball game against North Carolina A&T. That pushes them back to the 41. Second half action. Yak football. Glad you could join us for our coverage. Charles Ward, Curtis Foster with the play call. On the ground. They slide it back to the inside. Cartwright lost the football. Tigers pick it up there near the 45-yard line. And a turnover there gives some life to the Tigers of Savannah State. They ripped it away from Cartwright. And that's just what the Tigers needed at this point here. They needed a big turnover. Now the thing is, can the Tigers come back and capitalize on this turnover? This is what they needed. This is the, the point that they needed this second half. They needed this break. They'll get the football at the 44-yard line. So the Tigers in business now after the cough by Cartwright. Fifth fumble recovery by the Tigers on the season. They go to McLeod, left side, fights his way past the second wave of that Aggie defense inside the 40. Determined run there by Jalen McLeod. Got it down to the 38. Pick up up six on that play by the sophomore running back. Gibbons on the ground. McLeod stutter steps. Now charges ahead near the 35-yard line, close to the 34. And they're going to put him down there and put him right where he needs to be for the first down. So the Tigers are looking good so far. Coming out on offense here, sustaining the drive, moving the football down the field. Uh, Where well, they continue to do this. And, and, and they definitely would need to put some points on the board here on this series. In their opening possession of the football game, they looked good and then sputtered at the end of that drive. We'll see if they can sustain one here, trailing at 21 nothing. I was trying not to say that, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it was soft enough. <laughs> Gibbons joined by McLeod in the backfield. Slot is at the top of the screen. Now they break that, bringing a man in motion. That's Martin. Now Gibbons got to keep it himself left side. Slides up to the left side and inside the 20. Nice move there by Devon Gibbons with the option pitch behind him as the option, but just took away on that football left side for the run. You know, Gibbons, Gibbons has been doing a good job for the Tigers, especially with his feet. He's an excellent quarterback, good run quarterback. Uh, he can throw the ball as, as, as well, but his running is, is awesome, you know for this Tigers team. They go with that misdirection by bringing Baldwin in motion and then pushing to the left side of the field, keeping McLeod there as a pitch man, and Gibbons read it well. Down to the 15, first and 10 for Savannah State, trying to see if they can notch their first score of the ball game. On the ground, McLeod slides right side back to the interior, and that's where he meets the Aggie wall there near the 13-yard line. And the Aggies are saying, no, 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 not here today. Surge in front there by North Carolina A&T. McLeod nets two on that carry for Savannah State. Gibbons back to pick up his towel behind the officials. And now joins play as the play clock works its way down to 13. Saxton joins him in the backfield. Second down. And nine. Saxton looking for room left side. Now angles back to the inside. Saxton low to the ground, fighting to the interior. And a big pickup there by him. Going to be about two yards shy of the marker. That was a great cutback by Saxton here. Just reading that as he worked his way toward the sideline and saw the hole back to the inside. So 
always amazing to watch running backs who are able to continue the forward progress yet keep their head on a swivel trying to find an open space. Saxon did a good job on that carry. Third down and three now. Gibbons gives it on the ground. Saxton this time bottled up behind the line of scrimmage by a surging Aggie defense led by Keondrick Richardson, the redshirt senior. That is a very interesting call here where you go for three or you want to get the touchdown. Looks like they're keeping the offense out on the field at this point. Giovanni Lugo, the junior, two of eight field goals this year for the Tigers of Savannah State, has a long of 44 yards. But it looks like the Tigers facing a fourth down. And boy, it looks like to be a full six here. They're going to go for it. Gibbons surveys in the pocket to the end zone. The defense fell down to the tight end. Touchdown grab there by the Tigers. Check the flag at the back of that play. But he found the tight end coming across for the catch for the six. Hey, it's Paris Baker. Baker in the end zone with the grab. And that was a great call by the coaching staff of the Tigers there. Bacon just came across and, and saw that open spot across the middle. He's a big target. You know, I, I don't know why the Tigers don't use the tight ends a lot more than what they do. I mean, they have two big tight ends with great hands, you know, and, and give them an opportunity. Every time they do go to them, something good happens. Only his fourth catch of the year, but yeah. this one, his second touchdown with the grab from the pass by Gibbons. High snap. They get it down, and it's blocked at the line of scrimmage. The Aggies pick it up after the block, and up the field with it is Jamal Darden for North Carolina a &T. So the point attempt after the touchdown was blocked. So with 10-16 remaining in the third quarter, the Tigers get on the scoreboard. They trail it now 21-6 to the Aggies. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Vaporize it with an intense rush of Vicks Vapors. New day cool severe with Vicks Vapor Cool. The daytime coughing stuffy head vaporizer cold medicine. Back live at TA Wright Stadium. Things starting to change just a bit here. Tigers taking advantage of a turnover and scoring. 21 6 lead for the Aggies in North Carolina AT. Savannah State trying to claw its way back into the Wilson Curtis. Williams with the kick. Backpedaling. It will come down to Wilson. Wilson, left side, has got some room there. Spins ahead. Knocked at the 34-yard line and finally pushed out of bounds near the 33 after the special teams for the Tigers finally catches up with him. But well, that was a good return by Wilson there, and, and, and hopefully that the defense step up here to get a big stop. And that was something that Tigers need. At least they, they, they got a turnover and they capitalized on the turnover. Hopefully they can get another one to get back in this ball game here. Wilson, last week special teams player of the week for the MEAC, had a punt return for 99 yards for a touchdown. Also FCS stats special teams player of the week as well. Runs this one up to the 33-yard line. That's where the Aggies will take it back on offense after they turned it over on their initial possession in the second half of play. Nice, beautiful day here in the Savannah area on one of the prettiest campuses in all of colleges. Savannah State campus, if you haven't seen it, it's just absolutely beautiful. On the ground, back to the inside on the carry. That's Martin for the Aggies. He works his way up to the 40-yard line. Well, you know, you got, you got to give Jermaine Martin credit there because he kept his feet moving at all times, even though he was stopped for a minute, but he kept kept the feet pumping and pumping to he find a little space to get a couple of yards out of it. Actually, a couple of big yards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about six or seven, yeah. yeah. Carter set now, and he'll take the snap. On the ground, right side on the carry, it's Martin again. Martin and the offense just surging ahead right side, past the 45 to the 46, that's enough for the Aggie first down. 
I had a chance to talk to Obio Arshariki at the break, serving in both capacities at Savannah Stadium. He's talking a little bit about the move to Division II. We didn't get a chance to get in it too heavily. Right. But just looking at Savannah State now in terms of where they're finishing, it looks like it's going to be either three and seven or with one more game it could change. At least we know it's going to be below 500. So uh, probably a welcome change for Savannah State to be thinking about that Division right. II move and just in terms of enhancing the program because it's all about winning to a large degree and the success level you talked about in the pregame just has not really been here at the MEAC. Exactly. On the ground now they give it once again. Marshall slices right side past midfield and works his way to the 45. And Curtis, although we're early <laughs> in this third quarter of play, you talked about it at the intermission that that defense with the Tigers has been out there, was out there for quite a while in that first half. And now the Aggies seeming to take advantage yeah, of them it's, now. It's, it's starting to wear them down. This is a defense that does not have very much depth. You know, they, they're very light at depth. Keeper this time by Carter. Carter works his way to the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of four. We saw it in that first half that the Aggies were coming at the Tigers in a lot of different ways. Carter running, Cartwright running, Martin running, and then Carter throwing the football. Well, the thing right now, the Aggies just want to wear this Tiger defense down right now, and that's what they're trying to do. And that's keep pounding and pounding and pounding at them. 8.25 left in the third, 21-6 score. Aggies with the lead and the football. On the ground, this time Cartwright fights ahead. Good gang tackle there by Savannah State. Comes after about a four-yard pickup by Cartwright up middle. And these these, uh, these uh, backs of the Aggies doing a great job is reading off the blocks and, and hitting the holes. That'll be third down effort coming now after the run by Cartwright. Aggies defending MEAC champs and HBCU national champs. Non-MEAC titles to their credit. Whistles at the line of scrimmage. This one going against the Aggies in North Carolina A&T, so that'll push them back five. That'll help the Tigers defense out so They can really dial up some blitz plays now. Push it back to the 42-yard line. Aggies just a half game out of first place in the MEAC. They've got to win out to contend for the conference title. Chasing the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Need some help from Bethune-Cookman if they want to repeat as back-to-back -back champs. Seven titles outright from North Carolina A&T. Co-champions in 2014 and 2015. Carter this time going up top. Got a man behind the coverage. Football oh. bobbled and dropped. He had Ron <laughs> Hunt free and Hunt Excited about the space, <laughs> took his eyes off the football. That's exactly what he did. He <laughs> took his eyes off. It was in his hands, and he just took his eyes off that he had it, and he went to fumbling with it. A great pass by Carter. I mean, great pass, great progression read there. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better there. Just that, that hunt just needed to catch the football. Catch the football. could have asked for that, right? <laughs> yes. So the Aggies, after an impressive start of this drive, after they fumbled on their first one to start the second half, set to punt the football away. So the Tigers now with another opportunity to hear see if they can't come closer on the scoreboard. Rivers trying to turn it over to get it rolling forward, but it takes a side roll and out of bounds near the 15-yard line. He's trying to cough and corner it right side, but didn't get it going forward. So Savannah State, the defense bends a bit there, but they hold, and the offense back out now. Well, you know, uh, I, my favorite saying is anything can happen in the MEAC, yep. and you, you, you never know – what a team can come like out the second half. Timeout on the field. 21-6. Aggies with the lead. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. And vaporize it with an intense rush of Vicks Vapors. New day cool severe with Vicks Vapor Cool. The daytime coughing stuff you had vaporize your cold medicine. It's Orange out in senior day here at Savannah State. Live from T.A. Wright Stadium. Tigers with the football trailing at 21-6 to the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. 7.02 left in the third. Gibbons with the keeper for Savannah State. Flag tossed in at the back of that play. 
He's crunched down near the 20-yard line after the run. It's got to be a hole there. Coach, you're right on target. That'll go against the Tigers of Savannah State. That's their eighth of the football game. And that'll push them back. Looks like they're going to place it down near the seven-yard line. Half the distance there. You know, Charles, sometimes penalty can really hurt you in a ball game. You can get a momentum going and start having so many excessive penalties, and this could take everything away from you. Great point, because there, after they stop the Aggie offense, the offense for the Tigers really in a good situation there, having scored on the previous possession of the football. And now this penalty here, we'll see how it impacts this drive. Gibbons fires upfield. They went on that same route to, on the inside on a flag coming in there. Travion Pratt, the freshman from High Point, North Carolina, on the route. Bumped from behind. So this one is going to go against North Carolina A&T. Yes, it is. And a couple of those flies came out there. And to your point, Curtis, like you're talking about penalties can sometimes kill a drive. Sometimes penalties can help a drive. <laughs> uh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So okay. there. <laughs> well, we've, we've been premature on that one. They say the pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage. So there's no interference pass, uh, play called on Pratt downfield. Right. But you are exactly right about that. Sometimes it can, penalties can help you. And both of us have seen it. You sure, know? absolutely. <laughs> so it remains second down now for the Tigers of Savannah State after the tipped pass. So Gibbons and the offense set to go back to work now. He'll take the snap. McLeod dances looking for room, but there's none there. Aggies, Aggies of North Carolina A&T tightening up at the line of scrimmage. They really know that if they can pin Savannah State down here and force a three and out, then they're going to have the football back with good field position. Yes. Big third down play coming here, both sides of the football. Clock Is running here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Well, this is a very, very big play here for the Tigers. Uh, they want the first down. They need the first down right here. They got to get it all the way up to the 25-yard line for that. Gibbons in the pocket. He surveys. Here comes the pressure. Unloads, coming back for the football, and the pass is incomplete. Had a man there. Then be back beyond the sticks with the distance, but not able to focus in enough to hold that football. Catchable ball there. Yes, it was. Very catchable ball. And, and it was a good read by Gibbons staying in the pocket to, to get it off. Indeed, you're right. You made the point earlier that he can pass the football, but they just have not, as a team, been overall that successful in doing it. Showed good flair there and a great accurate arm on that pass. But the back end of it just not able to close. Well, you know, you, you can pass the ball, but you got to have someone <laughs> on the other end that can catch the ball. It only counts if it's caught, right? <laughs> so Williams to kick it from the end zone. They're not coming again. Let's see if he gets a better kick here. He does higher kick there by Williams. Backpedaling, fumble of the football. Comes right down to the Tigers of Savannah State. Wow. It was McCain circling to try to catch the football for the Aggies on the return, and he dropped it. Uh, he'd have been out better letting it go. <laughs> <laughs> the recovery by Vashon Bledsoe, the sophomore from Atlanta, out of Banneker High School, right there on the spot as McCain muffs and Bledsoe covers. Now the Tigers have another opportunity here, a better field position. <laughs> Their first score came off of a turnover by the Aggies. We'll see what they do on this one after the turnover. And the fumble by McCain. 5.34 remains in the third. 21-6 lead for the Aggies. Gibbons, pressure at the corner, unloads, got a man. That's Saxton in space. Saxton puts the head down and charges near the 41. Close to the first down marker. I think he's gotten enough for Curtis. We'll see. Yeah, they're he's moving the chains. And that was a good play by the Tigers, too, uh, bringing Saxton out of the backfield, let him sit right down there in the window there, in the middle there. You know, there's three different windows there, and he found the one in the middle was wide open. So first down play there for the Tigers of Savannah State after the run and catch by Rashad Saxton. Football at the 41-yard line playing on the Aggie side of the field. Gibbons keeps it himself. Now tries to spin back to the inside and behind the line of scrimmage. 
had an option of leaving that football with Saxon on the inside. Thought he saw something to the outside, but nothing there. Yeah, the, he saw something. He saw a lot of white Aggie shirts there. <laughs> After the decision was made, you're right. So that's a loss of three on that play by Gibbons. So it's second down, 13 now for the Tigers. Inside, Saxon's got some room. Runs back to the inside, close again to the first down marker. Rashad Saxon at 5'8", low to the ground, finds those holes on the inside. Good quick step back to the interior there. I know, we, we talked about it earlier about putting the ball in his hands. As he makes things, he's a playmaker. Third down and two after the carry by Saxton. See, do they go back to him on this play? Baldwin in motion. Saxton once again slides back to his left. Check out the mark after the hit on Saxton. Going to be short of that first down marker. That'll bring up fourth. Curtis, an oh, interesting the, the, play call here. The Tigers going for it. They going <laughs> for this here. I mean, hey, they have nothing new. They going for it. They, they were successful the last fourth down. Why not try it again? They bring in the larger, larger McLeod at running back on this fourth down play. We'll see if that's just for decor purposes or what. Well, you, you got to watch Gibbons. Got to watch Gibbons. He is quite capable of running it for that first down. They had some success throwing to Saxton just over the line, but he's out of the lineup. Now Baldwin goes in motion. They give it to... Our correction, McLeod tried to keep it. They got him back behind the line of scrimmage. They faked it to McLeod, and Gibbons kept it, but did not fool any of the Aggies on that play. Not at all. So they needed about two on that, less than a yard on that play, but they backpedaled on the run by McLeod, or Gibbons, that is, and now they turn it over. Now that, that could have been a big play for the Tigers there. Started that play kind of deep in the backfield. <laughs> You're watching me act football on ESPN3. Time coughing, aching, stuffy head, best sleep of the cold medicine. Back live at T.A. Wright Stadium. Aggies take the football over after boss it down there by the Tigers of Savannah State. They lead it 21-6. 241 left in the third. Left side. Aggies punch it ahead near midfield. It was Martin on that carry for North Carolina A&T. Pick up a five. It'll be six on that carry by Jermaine Martin for North Carolina A&T. He's already got one touchdown in this football game. You know, at this point, the Aggies, all they want to do is just run clock, run clock, burn clock. Let's get out. It's cold out here. <laughs> Second down and four. <laughs> Ball fake and on the carry inside again. That's Martin. Works it right side. You know, they want to pound, 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 and pound. Wear the defense down. Aggie yeah, offense, fifth in the run in the conference. But we talked about the fact that that Tiger defense has been out there for a while. And the guys up front for North Carolina A&T are starting to have their way inside the trenches. And you got to remember, this team ran for 310 yards last week against Norfolk. Had a total of 436 yards in that ball game. Yeah. Third down play now. They slide the tight end left side. Ball fake busted play there by Carter. Yeah. <laughs> they had everybody going left, and Carter wanted to go right. Yeah, Tiger, read, Tiger defense read that perfectly. But you talk about being exposed. Khalil Carter was on that play. Yes. So that'll force the punt for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. And it'll send Jermichael Baldwin back, the sophomore from Savannah, for return. Rivers to kick it. Line drive kick by Rivers. 
Still rolling forward, though, for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. Wow, what a good roll. <laughs> Ball flipped. Started rolling near the 20, 30-yard line and rolled all the way down to the five. Hey, you see the Aggies down here just waving it. Wave, wave, trying sure, to make it move sure. a little bit. Boom. Get some just, of that good wind from more. the Savannah River just pushing it toward the end zone. <laughs> So the Tigers of Savannah State with 28 seconds left in the third. They'll have to march at 95 yards for a touchdown, trailing it 21-6 to North Carolina A&T. Tigers, that last possession, lost it on downs. Fourth down play that lost some yards with Gibbons keeping it in the backfield. Not sure if that was by design in terms of what happened on that play. Fresh set here, though. Gibbons with the snap. On the ground, McLeod hit initially at the line of scrimmage, but not enough to bring him down. And he runs it up near the seven-yard line. And, you know, if you're the Tigers, you definitely don't want to get a situation where you have to continually pass the football. Yeah, yeah. everybody is anticipating it. Results usually aren't that good. Yes. Looks like that run by McLeod is going to bring us to the end of third quarter action here at T.A. Wright Stadium at the end of three. It is the Aggies of North Carolina A&T with a 21-6 lead over the Tigers of Savannah State University. Time out on the field. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. And to the fourth quarter we go here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Tigers of Savannah State with the football, trailing it to the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, 21-6. Gibbons for Savannah State. Fires out in the flats. Catch going to be made at the corner. Nicely done on the route. Benneby with the grab there behind the sticks for the first down. Yeah, it was a nice pass, nice catch. Third quarter stats at the end of three, 45 plays for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T, 292 total yards for Savannah State, 44 plays, 126 yards. Raquel Cartwright, eight carries for 115 yards on the ground for North Carolina A&T. And a penalty coming there at the line of scrimmage, false start there for the Tigers. And, yeah, and the Tigers have to get a sense of urgency. They need three scores in order to, to, to win this ball game. And, you know, they, they definitely going to have to get a sense of urgency. Eighth penalty of the contest for them there, Curtis, and that will push him back five. Possession, surprisingly fairly easy, even in terms of time of possession. Actually, Savannah State leading that with 23 minutes plus handling the football. But they trail it where it counts, 21-6. Gibbons in the pocket now. It's got some time. Now he feels and flushes and rolls it left side. Can't get it airborne and can't get past the defense. Stumbled momentarily there. Yeah, he had he had Hagen wide open downfield there. He just didn't see him. Felt the pressure of the pocket and started to roll to his left, which is his strong side as a left-handed quarterback, but not able to free the football up to pass it downfield. So second down coming now for the Tigers. Tigers closing out their season next weekend in Orangeburg, South Carolina, against the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. And they are closed their MEAC play with that ball game. Upfield and pass going to be intercepted there at the 31-yard line. It was picked off there by Tim Abram, the redshirt senior for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. And that time, Gibbons, nobody in the area for the Tigers of Savannah State. Well, he saw the Aggies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, wow. Aggie was sitting there waiting on it. Padre Abram, the Red Church senior, that's his third interception of the season. Tied him for first. Now takes first place for the team in terms of picks with his third there. Was tied with two coming into today's ball game. So short field here for the Aggies. And you talked about that sense of urgency for the Tigers of Savannah State. Just not able to execute on the offensive end there. They give it back to the Aggies with a... First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Left side and sliding back to the inside. Catch the flag on that play as Cartwright carries left side. And, you know, we, we talk about Cartwright. He has 115 yards so far in his ball game on eight carries. Whole offense for the Tigers of Savannah State just at 126. 
but this one going against the Aggies of North Carolina. So that'll push them back out to the 42-yard line. Well, you know, the thing about the Aggies, they just want to keep possession of this ball and, and keep the clock rolling. Indeed, you know, that's their strategy to run down this, this final quarter of play. But you, sometimes you have to be careful about that. Yes. They made a couple of turnovers, allowed the Tigers at least a chance here. It's an issue of whether the Tigers can capitalize. This time on the ground, they work it inside. And it'll be caught right on the carry again. Helmet comes out of there. And he's going to step off for a play. Markel Hardy, the senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Will have to take the A train to Philly for one play. <laughs> I like that. 12.43 <laughs> left in this contest. Carter sets, play clock to seven. With the snap, got some pressure. Tigers going to try to wrap him up. He lost the football again. This one's on the surface. Tigers diving for it. Did they get it? They did. Yes, they did. So the Aggies doing everything within their power to give the Tigers a chance to score some touchdowns here in this second half. Again, Carter with a fumble. It's like the Aggies are trying to, to give the Tigers an opportunity to come back in this ball game. So the defense comes up big for Savannah State, and they'll turn it over to the offense at the 39-yard line. Yes, <laughs> make it an ass. <laughs> Back live at T.A. Wright Stadium, another turnover by the Aggies gives the football back over to Savannah State. Aggies with a 21-6 lead, 12-19 remains in the contest. Final home ball game of the 2018 season for the Tigers of Savannah State, trying to play spoiler against the Aggies. Still in contention for the MEAC crown. Right side, Saxton's got some room. Breaks three, third level of the defense now. And finally chased out of bounds beyond the 40. At the 40-yard line is where they'll put him out. So just a quick hitting play right side. And Rashad Saxton with the blocking up front able to find the space. That's a big run on that first play after the turnover. That's a momentum starter. Yes. On the ground, Saxton slides back to the inside, wrapped up near the 41 yard line. Saxton with 11 carries for 27 yards. In the third quarter, we'll wait for the third quarter update on the stats to give you a read on where he is at this point. Second down here for the Tigers. On the ground, Saxton avoids one tackler in the backfield, but he can't avoid the entire gang of Aggies that catch up with him. Well, you know, the thing about it is these Tigers make a big play and then they come back and get the ball down here. Aggies with the surge up front there. Had an initial look at Saxon. He was able to avoid that, but everybody else is able to come forward on that play. Third down play coming here for Savannah State. At the 37-yard line. Tigers, chance to notch a score, trailing at 21-6. Play clock to five, and whistles. And a timeout taken by the Tigers of Savannah State, getting close to a de delay a game. And Coach Rabin burns the timeout here to avoid the five-yard assessment. 
So Tom on the field, you're watching MEAC football on ESPN3. Our members are the mission. Back to live action at T.A. Wright Stadium. Third down now for the Tigers of Savannah State. Gibbons fires at the corner. Pass batted away. Was trying to get it out there to Pratt. And good defensive coverage at the corner there by Amir McNeil, the redshirt freshman for the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. And that was great coverage by McNeil there. I mean, he came up on a quick way to close out. Floater by Gibbons on the pass. Pratt had a look at it. But the coverage by McNeil is on the spot for the Aggies. Fourth down, and the Tigers going for it here. From the 37-yard line. Snap to Givens. Line of scrimmage, and a flag comes there. So that play gets up and underway, but looks like it's going to go against the Tigers. So Pratt left early from the wide out position. And he does that right in front of the line judge. <laughs> well, that, that changed your mind quick sure. there. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking going on four. That five yards difference makes all the difference in terms of the decision. So Williams to punt it now. Just the small things in this game. That has just allowed Savannah State not to, to be able to close that gap. Snap. And Williams trying to pooch it right side and kicks it out of bounds. See where it went out in flight. They're going to put it down at the 19-yard line. So that's where North Carolina A&T will take the football back. Aggies 7-2 overall. 4-1 in MEAC play. Half a game out of first coming into this week's action. I tell you, this fourth quarter has been a flip-flop back and forth, you know, turnovers, but nobody has done anything real big except for the Tigers came out at the beginning of the half and scored. But since there is no big activities, anything has really been happening. Agreed. 21-6. Aggies with the lead and the football. Carter with three up top on the screen. Ball fake, fires out in the flats. Wilson just crushed in his tracks there as they were trying to get that football from him from the 15-yard line. <laughs> so they've been using that pass play throughout this football game. Yes, and that they have. Time, Wilson just set up for a crushing blow there by that Tiger defense. Yeah, they, they read that perfectly. Second down now for the Aggies. Under 10 minutes left in the ball game. Carter, ball fake on the ground. That'll be Martin coming up from under that pile with the carry. Or correction, that's Cartwright on the Cartwright on the carry there for the Aggies, and Cartwright to the 20-yard line. Cartwright over 100 yards already in the football game. Martin, the bigger of the two backs, at 59 at the end of three quarters of play. Third down play now. Carter in the pockets, got time. Now raises fires toward the sideline, trying to go up and tr pull it down, but it's too high for Leslie. I'm quite sure Carter said he would have came out better running. Yeah, if he'd have ran the ball, he had enough sure. to get the first down. That's what I thought his decision was going to be. He had a lot of turf in front of him. Instead, he tries the aerial. That goes incomplete. And that brings on the punting unit for the Aggies and gives the Tigers another shot at it. Baldwin standing at the 40. He can get a good return here. Savannah State will have good field position to start a drive. But you got to start looking at the clock here sooner or later. It's at 9-12 at the moment. They're coming after the kick. And he got it away. Good kick there. Baldwin catches at the 40. He's going to have to have do this on his own. A flag coming in at the back of that play. As Baldwin with the grab stepped through a couple of defenders. Got it to the 46. But let's check the flag. Jabari Jordan, the freshman, was downfield trying to block four 
Baldwin on that return. It's going against the Tigers. Didn't so, need that one. So Judon, the freshman from Jacksonville, got caught there with the illegal block. And that will push it back to the 30-yard line. Timeout on the field. On ESPN. Fred? During the GMC Sierra Black Friday event, get over 12,000 total value on a specially equipped 2018 Sierra SLT Crew Cab when you finance through GM Financial. Back live at TA Wright Stadium, Aggies, North Carolina, 21. Tigers, Savannah State 6. Tigers with the football, first and 10. Ball faked by Givens. Looking upfield, fires behind the defense. Got the tight end there. That's Baker once again. Baker up to the middle of the field. Lex cut from under him inside of the 30-yard line. You know, every time they go to Paris Baker, something <laughs> happens. You know, they don't use him enough. Baker with two big catches in this football game. Got the touchdown for the Tigers from the pass from Gibbons, and there a big play downfield inside the 30-yard line on the grab there. So you're right, good things happen when you go to Paris. On the ground, Saxton looking for some room, nothing there up front. Hey, you know, I'm gonna tell you a little something about Paris Baker. Paris Baker, he's an athlete in high school. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the city. They move him to receiver, but he can throw the ball, too, as well. Baker, third team all MEAC for the Tigers of Savannah State. Six two, two hundred fifty-seven pounds. Down to the 25. Clock running at 7.45 remaining now. Gibbons. Sense of urgency here. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Raises. It. Going to fire it to the end zone. Got a man there on the crossing route. Going to be a touchdown grab there by Zara Benaby. But we'll check the flag at the line of scrimmage. And as you might expect there, Curtis, that's a hold against the Tigers. Yes, it is. Nice strike to Benaby in the end zone, but all for naught. So the assessment will push the football back to the 35-yard line. Baldwin will go set right side in the slot. Movement up front, we'll check the flag. Looks like the left tackle. Harvey King may have come out of set early on that for the Tigers. Don't want to be premature on that call though. Tigers saying it's against the Aggies in North Carolina A&T. And the officials would disagree with that call. Yeah. Harvey King looked like he did break his set a little bit early there for Savannah State. So now the Tigers backpedaling on a drive that they need to be going forward. 7.33 remains. Back-to-back -back penalties pushes the Tigers back to the 40 now. Second down effort. They almost got to get to Statesboro for first down on this play. <laughs> That's a long one. <laughs> 40, 45 miles. <laughs> Gibbons in the pocket. Left side. Raises. Pumps. Now he'll tuck and run. Runs out of bounds near the 36-yard line. Saxon trying to apply that late block. And a flag coming in at the end of that play. Saxon just downfield blocking for his quarterback. Knocked Sam Blue to the ground just in front of the Tiger bench, and I don't think Blue was happy about that result. It may have come up saying something. And 
This one going against the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. So the Tigers get the benefit of that penalty for a first down. And it kept what was a sputtering drive there, Curtis, alive. Yes, it did. 7.23 remains. Savannah State here trailing at 21-6. Good opportunity in front of them. Can they capitalize and close on a score? Trips top of the screen for the quarterback, Gibbons. He'll take the snap looking that way. Now checks off going left one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be in the end zone. Going to have a flag there. Yeah, corner of the end zone trying to catch up with that play on defense was Amir McNeil. He's done some good defensive work for the Aggies in this football game. But that time, guilty of the faceoff there in Benaby gets the benefit of the flag. Well, you know, the Tigers got to look at it. They still need three scores. They still need three scores. 7.02 left, and you got to start thinking about that. And now the officials were conferring. They're saying that that pass was caught in the end zone, and the Tigers are saying it was a touchdown. So now they're they ruling that it was not a catch. And they'll mark it off down to the five. So inside the red zone, the Tigers go. Trailing at 21-6. So first and goal to go now. Absolute must touchdown scenario here for the Tigers of Savannah State. Saxton joins Gibbons in the backfield. On the handoff, Saxton trying to find some space inside. Not much there. They have gotten a half yard on that play. Yeah. Tigers need to score quickly here. They almost get the sense that if that's going to happen, it's not going to happen with Saxton running it up the middle. Not at all. If you get him in some space it's or even get a roll out and get some of these receivers maybe free in some space. You know, the Tigers are, they take any time getting the plays in, you know, they definitely got to get a sense of urgency. 6.30 and clock running here at T.A. Wright Stadium. In motion, that's Baldwin. Ball fake. Gibbons, here comes the pressure. He'll lose the first wave. Now raises, fires to the end zone. Back of the end zone. No, oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. No, they're going to say he had it long enough. Touchdown grab by Stephen Hagen. Hagen, the senior, at the back of the end zone. The defense waved in front of him. Hagen able to keep his concentration oh, they, they and go, catch they, it. They, they're going to discuss it. They are discussing it. One of the officials judged that he had it long enough kept possession of it and it's going to be a touchdown looks like that's the call and indeed it was the touchdown by Hagen so Hagen off the bench at the back of the end zone kind of a hail Mary there from Gibbons he was under duress and got it to the back of the end zone Hagen able to focus as a defensive player came waving by for the catch even if they get the two points here they still would need to to score <laughs> yeah you got to get into the math now in terms of what you got to do on your other scores but what they did there was a big help for them there yes, they got it, was the touchdown. A, it was a great help and before the point after attempt timeout taken I believe is by the officials because coach Washington for the Aggies really wants to question that call at the base of the end zone really can't do much about that now no, he can't, but he has a right to, to discuss it, you know, and you can't take your timeouts home with you, so you might as well use them. <laughs> so on this big play, which we believe is going to be a two-point conversion attempt by the Tigers of Savannah State, big ball, big play for both sides now on yeah. this play. Remember when Savannah State scored their first touchdown on the ball game, they missed on the point after. Now, my, my opinion is, how many seconds do you have to have the ball? See, that's, that's the thing. You know, how many seconds do you have to have? Because it seemed like time he grabbed it, he never tucked it, and the ball came out. Well, that's a good question, because at the back of the end zone, he had it, and then 
He looked like he may have had it long enough to, to at least establish, establish his feet in the yeah. end zone. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing about it, it's a sad thing. They don't have instant replay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a timing thing there in terms of what the official saw there. If he saw it enough that he was possessing hey. it, because he didn't bobble it, it just it came out. Exactly. The guy from uh, Aggies hit him, and it came out his hand, it came across. So but touchdown. Once he, yeah, once he established his foot in the end zone, it's a touchdown. And that's what they went with. 21-12 now, two-point conversion here for the Tigers of Savannah State. Gibbons alone in the backfield with the snap. Surveys. Now rolls left side. He'll have to try to run it. Now fired it into the end zone and incomplete. Was trying to get it back to Paris Baker in the end zone for the conversion, but not able to do so. No lane for Gibbons to elect to run to try to get the two-point conversion there because they had him covered at the sideline. Well, I'm quite sure the Tigers would try a pooch kick or maybe an arm side kicker because they definitely need the ball back right now. 6-14 left. Breaking the action. 21-12 lead for the Aggies. Watching the act football on ESPN3. So the Tigers of Savannah State answer there with the touchdown. Not able to convert on the two point play. But we'll see what they do, as you indicate, Curtis. If they'll do something here, onside kick perhaps, or maybe the pooch just to see if they can catch the Aggies in, in not ready position on a kick. Well, I see WC Coach Demasi is trying to get his special teams ready and, and decide on what they're going to do. So a big pass downfield to Paris Baker set up that touchdown. A penalty against the Aggies aided at the cause. And pass from Gibbons to Hagen in the end zone completed it. See what Williams, or correction, what Lugo does here. Well, correction to Chandler Williams with the kick. See what Williams does on the kick here. They go for the pooch kick. It'll come up to one of the up men. It'll be fielded by Williams Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth's oh. got some free room on the left side. And Hollingsworth rambles all the way down near the 35 yard line of the Tigers of Savannah State. And that is absolutely not what they wanted to happen on that play. Not at all. They did not hope for that to happen there. But those are the chances that you take when you, you do the, the pooch coop kick or a armside kick. Hollinsworth, the freshman from Columbus, Georgia, fullback for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. So not an unfamiliar situation with him to be returning or running a football and showed it there. We'll call it a burst of speed. Yes. Hollingsworth got outside and created some space. And the Aggies back in business now with 5.59 remaining in the football game, and they lead it 21-12. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Check the flag. Looks like it's going to be a false start against the Aggies of A&T. Well, the Aggies, you don't want to start off like that either. So that'll push them back five. And really, they should be lucky that that was a false start because Fred Raines charged that line for the Tigers of Savannah State. And he had a mean look in his eye headed toward quarterback Khalil Carter. So after the assessment, they go right back on the ground, working it back to the inside. That's Martin with the football, and he pounds his way inside of the 30-yard line. Got most of that back on that play. Got all of the penalty back. Runs it to the 27, second down on about four. And if I was the Aggies, I wouldn't worry about passing right now. I just <laughs> want to, you know, run the ball and, and keep the clock rolling. Carter in the backfield, joined by Martin. It's Carter with the keeper. Slides left side, and Carter still on his feet. He's going to fight his way all the way in and got the touchdown <laughs> for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. <laughs> So this team from Greensboro just strikes right back right. after the touchdown by Savannah State. What a quick answer. <laughs> Carter just not to be denied on that run left side. Was bumped and tripped momentarily at the line of scrimmage. Kept his balance and worked his way all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to make it difficult there. Ruiz with the point after.
Kirk Baruiz, and he knocks it through for North Carolina A&T. So the Aggies build a 28-12 lead with 5-21 remaining in the football game as they answer the touchdown from Savannah State on the ensuing drive. The pooch kick tried by the Tigers of Savannah State, and it really worked to the disadvantage with the return by Hollingsworth. Well, you know the thing is, the Tigers are going to come make a score quickly here. 521 remains. See some signs of this Savannah State team at 2-6 and six on the season that there's potential for this team to be a lot better than what, what, what the final results have shown for them this season, but just not able seemingly, and certainly in this contest, to play a full game without uh, hurting their own cause. Exactly. Tigers of Savannah State going to be departing the MEAC after this year. So this is their final home game in the MEAC. They'll play next weekend against the Bulldogs of Savannah State, and then next year it's on to the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, which is the conference that the Tigers actually were, were members of years yes, ago. Yes, they, they were in there before. Kick's going to come down to Baldwin. Baldwin spins in the inside and racks up there near the 25. He spin. He didn't go anywhere on that one. Stucky for the Aggies in on that stick for them for the return by Baldwin. Tigers reflect on this football game, though, Curtis. They're going to look at it and watch that film and say, hey, we were we had every opportunity in the yep. world to really take this team down. Exactly. They had every opportunity to do what they needed to do. Now you're in a passing situation. I'm quite sure that the Aggies know that they're going to pass. But at the same time, you still got to watch Givens. <laughs> and we've seen Baker, the tight end, with the big play on the last possession. So a couple of weapons that the Tigers can go to here. But it doesn't help you when you score and you let them get it right back. That's just what happened on the last possession. Gibbons in the pocket now. Here comes the pressure. Dumps it underneath the ball when on the cross. Baldwin up past the 35-yard line. And that's enough for uh, Ag uh, Tiger first down at the 38. They got to move quickly. They are. Look like they're trying to get back to the line of scrimmage as quickly as they can. And once these chains get set, they're trying to go with it. Now they're set. Looks like Savannah's ready to go once the officials clear out. They do. And clock geared at 440 now. Gibbons with the snap. Backside pressure but unloads on a crossing route. Catch made there by Sneed. His second grab of the ball game. Puts the football near midfield for Savannah State now. Actually down at the 49 of the Aggies. We're at the 425 mark now. Gibbons on the ground. Left side, McLeod met at the line of scrimmage. You know, you, you got to continue to pass. You got to, you know, and you, you got to hit the sideline passes. Get out of bounds, stop the clock. You know, that's what you got to do. The Aggie's going to give you the middle. Sure because that's going to keep the clock rolling. Excellent point there. Second down effort there. They're coming now after a loss of one on the play by McLeod on the previous run left side. That takes us down to 343 and the clock rolling here at T.A. Wright Stadium. Gibbons. Pass out in the flats. Catch made there but wrapped up immediately after the grab was Benneby. That's a pickup of about four. I don't think he got out of bounds either, Curtis, on that they, play. They're not trying. The, the, the receiver's got to be smart, too. Catch, get as much as you can, get out of bounds. Stop the clock. You want to save as much time as you can. So third down play now coming for the Tigers. They're at the 46 of the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. With the clock running with three minutes remaining. Trailing it 21, 28 to 12 now. Gibbons fires out in the flats floater and it goes incomplete. Had Sneed in the area, but the pass thrown too high by the lefty. 
So coming up on fourth down here, Curtis. Well, you know, I'm quite sure the Aggies going to come with a blitz here and, you know, just, just protect. Just they're going to protect the end zone. Uh, you got about, what, six, well, a little over six, about six yards to go, you know. So Aggies at the minimum want to keep that football in front of them on this fourth down play. Snap, Gibbons. Here comes the pressure. Short side of the field. Nowhere to go for him, so he has to step out of bounds, and as he does that, ball goes over to the Aggies after a loss of down. And you got to give the Aggies credit. They did a great job on coverage there as, as uh, you know, defending the, the Tigers receiver. Did exactly what you said they needed to do. They played back. Everybody held. Nobody free. Gibbons nowhere to run at the sideline. They dialed it up. The Aggies did yes, when they, they did. needed to in this football game to put that pressure up yes, front. They did. So they'll have the football now with 2.41 remaining in the contest and keeping their lane possibly to back to back NEAC championships alive. They needed to win today to stay in the hunt for it. Just a half game out of the lead. They will be at home next weekend hosting the Eagles of North Carolina Central at BBNT Stadium. Ball fake there by Carter. And he'll keep it right side. They're doing exactly what you talked about yeah, now. That's all they need. They, a couple of first downs, they, they can wrap it up. And I think the Tigers of Savannah State took a time out there. They took it with 2.33 remaining. So the Aggies, probably not their best performance of the year, but they come here into T.A. Wright Stadium into Savannah and with just 2.33 remaining, have done enough here to push through with this football game. Yes, they did. You know, and, uh, you know, we talked earlier, the Tigers did have a lot of opportunities to get in this ball game, you know, to make some things happen. They just did not capitalize on a few things, you know, and penalties kills. The Tigers, you know, mistakes kill the Tigers. Um, and, and the Aggies just kept fighting. Even though the Tigers started coming back on them, they still maintained what they had to do. They did, they did not give up. They didn't get down. They still know they had to fight, you know. And give the, I'll give the Tigers credit, too, for fighting, trying sure. to stay in this football game. You know, both teams, I think, had played good today. So the Aggies, after the timeout by the Tigers, back out onto the football field. Just trying to run this one out now. On the ground, left side on the carry. That's Cartwright. Just trying to keep that football into their possession. And Savannah State takes another time out here. So the Aggies in North Carolina A&T will take their series mark against the Tigers to 4-0 and as they say goodbye to the Tigers of Savannah State who are departing MEAC play. Tigers of Savannah State, Miak, not very friendly to them. <laughs> not at all. But, you know, you got to credit, it, it was a good run, you know, 9 and, 50, nine and 52 uh, was the record the whole time is uh, with the, the Miak, 9 wins, 52 losses. So it's, it's been a tough road in the Miak for the Tigers. And taking that decision to make the jump from Division 2 up to Division One, to FCS level was something that was contemplated by Savannah State, and they made that decision to do it. And after a few years in the MEAC, now making the decision that perhaps, and you heard uh, Mr. Marshall Riki talk about it at the break, is that the decision to go back to Division Two perhaps is a better one as it relates to budgetary issues, geographics, and a lot of other factors for Savannah State. Carter, they're going to try to pass this football. Out in the flats to Cartwright. Yeah. Surprised by that call there, Curtis. Me too, very surprised. <laughs> but you talk about Mark Shiriki, uh, you know, uh, I, when I first saw him, I thought he was a big-time linebacker or running back, you know, because he looks like a football player. I know, and, and sometimes when he go places, people mistake him, you know, ah, oh, did you play football? You're a professional <laughs> athlete? Uh, but that's his, his forte, you know. He, he looks like he's a professional player. <laughs> Intimidating to say yeah. <laughs> the least. <laughs> now a little bit of prevent here now on the punt. And they get it away. Fair catch called for by Baldwin near the 10. 
So Rivers on the kick. And Baldwin back. Taking that punt at the 10 and just took the fair catch there. May have had some room to try to create something there, Curtis. Well, you know, I'm quite sure he was instructed by the coaches, say, let's just get the ball back, let's save some time, and, and let's see, can we get the ball down the field? Because you remember, when you're returning a punt, a kick, you're, you're, you're running the clock, burning yep. clock, you know. 2.16 remains, and it's a football game. Aggies on their way to an uh, eight and two mark, and five and one in Miak play. Gibbons out in the flats and overthrown. Baldwin actually cutting back toward the line of scrimmage, and the pass thrown upfield. So that'll make it second down now. I can see some of these tigers on the sidelines. So let's get into the warm locker room somewhere. <laughs> Temperature is dropping here in the Savannah area, but a beautiful day, though. In the hostess city of the South, otherwise known as Savannah. Gibbons, pressure now, steps up, fires it, and threw it high, going up for the catch there. Nicely done on the grab is Benneby. And he's pushed out of bounds near the 17-yard line. He is hurt. He is not getting up either. He had to go way up for that football and yes, just sacrifice his body to do it. So he is down near the Savannah State sideline. 2.02 remaining in the football game. Just gave everything he had there to go up to get that football for the Tigers. They attend to him. Tigers now going to go to two and seven on the campaign. We're at two o two left here, and one and five in Miak play. Well, you know you, you you don't like to see anybody get like he's up though. Glad to see that. A lot of times you hope it's just the fact he had some yes. wind knocked out. Yeah, of him. I was just a stunner. I'm sure. glad to see the young man get up. So play will resume. Gonna be to the sideline. Sometimes after the play like that, you're like, well, why did I do that? But in the moment, it's about trying to catch that football. You can credit him for a great job and still able to get up there. Down the field, pass gonna go incomplete. Thought we might have seen a flag on that one. As Sneed was bounced out of bounds on the defensive coverage by Abram, but no flag. No flag. I was looking at it. See if anything was thrown there. So that'll bring up a fourth down here for the Tigers of Savannah State. And why not go for it here? Just a minute 47 remains. Saxton joins Gibbons in the backfield. Gibbons. Here comes pressure at the line of scrimmage, and he lost the football. Had it wrestled away uh, from him at the 10-yard line, and diving on it for the Aggies is Antavius Richardson, the red shirt freshman from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Uh, at this point here, the, the Aggies can run one time and take a couple of knees. I believe the Tigers may have one time while left, but... See what the mindset is of Coach Sam Washington and the Aggies of North Carolina A&T with a minute 41 left in the ball game. They lead it 28-12. Might be a situation here of just thinking, okay, let's we're at the 10. We got to punch it in. We don't want to pile on here. But we uh, want to make sure we're comfortable with the last minute 40 left. Well, I, one thing I can say about this Aggie fans, they travel very well. They have a nice crowd over there on the other side over there. Nice call on that. And they're going to go in prevent, the Aggies are, as Carter comes in and takes a knee. So Coach Washington and offensive coordinator Chris Barnett for the Aggies calling off the dogs. Hey, just will. take your time and get out the ball. You don't want nobody to get hurt. You know, you still got a chance to make the celebration bowl. You know, don't, you don't want to take any chances. So the Aggies keeping things in check for them as they win this football game. They 
play next weekend we'll to see how the Rattlers do at the end of the season in their final conference contest against the Wildcats of Benedict. And that's a game that can go anywhere. College. Yeah, that can go anywhere. It doesn't matter what the record is when those two meet. <laughs> Absolutely. Carter takes another DD to get the clock started. Excuse me, the Thune Cookman University. Yes. Down in Daytona Beach, Florida. One more knee, that, that should do it. So on senior day and orange out day at Savannah State University, also high school band day, Tigers just not able to overcome the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Aggies on the road, able to push on to their eighth win of the campaign. And there's that final knee you talked about, Curtis. It. As Carter does that, and credit Khalil Carter starting in this football game for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Lamar Rayner not playing. First team all-conference quarterback for them, and Carter did not miss a beat for them. So final score, 28-12. The Aggies of North Carolina State University win. Uh, North Carolina A&T State University win over the Tigers of Savannah State University in this MEAC ball game. And that will do it for our from our Professor William Martin, game analyst Curtis Foster. Great working with you and for the rest of our broadcast crew. Charles Ward saying thanks so much for joining us from Savannah, Savannah Georgia. Final score, Aggies of North Carolina A&T 28 and the Tigers of Savannah State University 12. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.